So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on how much energy some things used, and there were some surprises. The biggest surprise of all was that most of the synthesizers actually used next to no energy. So it kind of got me thinking. Think about this, it's in a post-apocalyptic world where you are just left with what is inside your shed and some synthesizers that you want to play on. How are you going to power them? Yesterday I had a look around and this is what I came up with. So yeah, everybody in their shed has a nice variety of cycles for when they promised themselves they were going to commute to work every day until that one rainy day and then they, uh, yeah, it kind of just went out the window. Not to mention the obligatory New Year's Day purchase, the exercise bicycle stand. Yeah, I think it got used about 20 minutes overall. Down here we've got two motors from uh, drills that have sadly, you know, ceased to function. Luckily the motors were still working. And over here we've got a modern accessory which is a car converter that converts the 12 volts from your car into mains electricity. And yeah, I'm pretty sure if you went on a camping trip you will probably have one of these sitting around in the shed as well. So what I did was I removed the actual resistance training parts from this kind of a uh, little system at the bottom, made some 3D printed parts on my Lulzbot Mini that kind of connected these two motors onto the shaft and yeah, some kind of uh, rudimentary, pretty dodgy bodges here. But nonetheless, we're in the shed. We've got to work with what we've got. These are just standard brush DC motors. So yeah, this was the best solution I could find from all the parts in my kind of spares box. The motors are a little too small. I wish I had some bigger motors, but whatever. Hopefully, I'm going to be surprised by what this can power. Anyway, let's give it a go. So the first thing I'm going to try and power are these two 1970s synthesizers at the same time. And yeah, this one's probably pretty power hungry, but it's worth a go, isn't it? Good grief. Jeez, it's not light. Plug in the extension cable. Oh my God, if this works. <laughs> okay, so with any luck, ooh. Okay, let's try this. No joke, this is plugged into it. I'm just gonna see if, uh, see if it actually comes out. actually powers it. So this bike is actually powering both of these synthesizers at the same time. I'm going to try and play them at the same time. Oh my God, okay, so these actually work. Let's try something else. Okay, so here goes. What happens if it's 1986, you need to do some exercise, but you also need to finish your essay on your word processor. Oh God, I don't know whether this is gonna work, but I'm gonna have to pedal really hard. No way! I'll pop it. I blew my voltage regulators. What a pain. Okay, we're back online. I've just replaced the voltage regulator and changed it a little bit. Uh, well, from parts I've still got lying around, but you know, regardless, I think it does need a bigger motor. I mean, you could use this to charge your phone. You could use it to charge your laptop, I'm sure. Let's just see if it'll power this Game Boy Mega Machine behind me. Let's just turn it on and see what happens. I actually think it's gonna work. I just turned, I just accidentally didn't plug something in. Let's just see if this. Okay, all right, one, two, three. Oh, <laughs> yes! It actually turns on. Look at the lights! And I stop. <gasps> no way! No way! Uh, why is the only, only the top row working? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh my god, two motor drills are powering the Game Boy Mega Machine. Oh, that's mad. What happens if you get bigger motors? Well, I'm gonna find that out in part two of this kind of like 
series of building this thing but the thing is it's actually still really easy to pedal and there's not much resistance with those tiny motors so let's see if we can wrap it up and probably put in a microwave motor but I'll have a look at that in a little bit but now I'm going to see what else you can actually power. What about a medium sized guitar amp? Should we find that out? So right here I have a 60 watt all valve Fender amplifier. Yeah, it's a valve amplifier. What do you reckon? Is it going to work with just these two drill motors to power this reasonably large valve amplifier? Hmm, I don't know. Let's just, um, I'm just going to strum the E chord and just start pedaling and just hope for the best. It's going to take a moment to warm up, so I best have my wits about me. Wait for it. a struggle there is a lot of noise in that but it goes to show that you can actually power a valve amp albeit it sounds like crap but it works <laughs> I don't believe it time to try a theremin let's see if I can play the song at the same time as well okay I gotta keep the speed kind of uh, constant or it's gonna waver around too much, but it's fine, let's just see. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't help that I can't really play Ferramin, but regardless, it works. If anybody's got any suggestions, then please, I'm all ears because this is probably a very inefficient way of doing it, but you know, we've all got to start somewhere. Yeah, check back for part two of this because I really want to get this ready to take out on my European tour. So the idea would be every single song, the whole synthesizer setup is actually powered by a different person pedaling. And they're kind of, you know, the pressure's on because if they get tired and they stop halfway through the song, well, the song stops. <laughs> But, you know, that's just a random idea. I'm going to see if I can actually get that working. I'm going to get this working for that. I'm going to do a little bit more mechanical working out on this because it's a true bodge job and it's started to break already. But let's, uh, let's see how it goes. I've been talking about this project over on my Patreon. I've been doing frequent vlogs over there on it and like my ideas and thoughts about it. But I think I am actually going to have to think about it a little bit more and delve deeper and find some bigger motors for it and whatnot. And not to mention Patreon helps support videos like this. So yeah, thank you very much. And I've been Look Mum No Computer. Don't forget to subscribe and like this. Don't be scared to try it.